Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Victoria Scott, and today I'm gonna walk you guys through my delt workout. So this is a new training block for me. I am bumping my workouts up, basically averaging three days a week. If you guys watched my previous videos, now I'm going into a transition season from my build before I go into a cut. So calories have been brought down just a little bit and my training has gone up. So I'm bumping up to five days a week and I've got three lower body days, two upper body days. The upper body sessions are heavily focused on delts with a little bit of back. I don't really need to do a ton of back work. So this will be a very delt focus workout today and a little bit of core. I'll run this program for about six weeks and I'll be starting my cut here probably in May. So I'm gonna be walking you guys through all of the workouts in this training block. So be sure to subscribe and follow my channel so you guys can follow this entire training block and this entire transition season before I start my cut. So I like to start off warming up with rear delts. First of all, just because I have primarily a desk job. I know a lot of people think I live in the gym. I do not. Uh, I do a lot of computer work and I'm on the phone a lot. So we all tend to, as we get older, have this sort of rounded shoulders and kind of slouch a little bit. So it's really great to warm up your upper back and just your rear delt, the back of your, your shoulder here, with a couple of sets of either a dumbbell reverse fly, a cable fly, uh, could be face pulls. I almost start every Every single delt workout that way uh, just to get those muscles activated work on my posture as well it's definitely one of the core exercises that I would keep in anybody's program if you're an adult you know 30s 40s 50s you absolutely should be making sure to include a few sets of like face pulls or rear delt work um, almost in every single upper body workout the front of your body tends to get a lot more work so doing everything you can to like counterbalance that I pretty much will do for every like front body work, like a front delt or a chest press for every one of those I would do, I would do two upper back rear delt exercises. So like a two to one ratio. All right, so we're gonna do two working sets here. I'm not gonna go super heavy on this because with dumbbells, I honestly can't go that heavy. I just really focus on form and having good tempo. The key is you don't wanna swing the weights. You wanna make sure that you have full control of the dumbbells the entire time. So as you're lifting, you have controlled tempo. And as you're returning back to starting position, you're controlling it. So every single rep should look the same from start to finish. We're going to do about 12 to 15 reps here. Just increase the weights. The rear delts are a very small muscle. So the percent of increase that you would achieve on any particular week or month would, is very marginal compared to like squats, for example. The best way to progressive overload on this exercise would be to just try to increase the number of repetitions that you did the previous week. Your strength isn't going to jump up every single week. You're not going to have an increase every week. If it was every like three weeks, that'd be pretty good. But you need to make sure that you're tracking it. Make sure the last rep looks exactly like the first rep. I'm gonna go up just a little bit. This is like the mood room. <laughs> Sometimes we get to have the lights on in here, but we have the moody lighting. Let me know if you guys like the moody lighting. All right, so we're moving on to exercise number two, which is gonna be a seated lateral raise. I love, love, love this machine for building a uh, nice roundness and fullness to the, the delts. This primarily works your medial delts or sort of this outer area here if you're new to lifting. I'm gonna do a couple warm up sets first and foremost, be able to move out, make sure my shoulder, um, my rotator cuff and everything feels good. And then I'm gonna go into some my rep set, which if you guys have watched some of my other videos, it's been a kind of a staple in my routine the last couple months. I love doing myo reps just to push a little bit harder in some of my sets and have more of an extended set. I'm gonna start with two warm up sets of about 10 reps, and then I'm gonna do uh, the myo rep sets, which is basically uh, pauses in between the sets. So you guys can see exactly what that looks like. Gotta adjust the seat.
feels good. Okay, warm up sets are done. We're gonna jump into our two working sets, myo rep sets. I'm gonna bump the weight up to my heaviest weights. We're gonna do somewhere between 12 to 20 reps. That is rep range for hypertrophy. Whatever reps I get in that first round, I'm going to take a couple of breaths and then I'm gonna do half of that. So basically say I do 12 in the first round, I'm gonna take two breaths, go back, do six reps, hopefully six to eight, something like that. Take another couple of deep breaths, let the burn off, and then do half of that, which would be somewhere between three and four reps, and then you're done. By the time you hit those last three to four reps, it's going to burn. It should feel very difficult. If you get close to failure or if you fail, congratulations mission accomplished. So we're gonna dive right in. All right, we got 14, so I'm gonna go for hopefully seven. Oh man, that's five. <laughs> We're gonna go for three to four here. So something else I wanted to point out with myo rep sets is because you know you're gonna take a couple of breaths and keep going, you might have sort of like the tendency to go easy on yourself in the first group. You don't wanna do that. You wanna go and do as many as you can almost to failure in that first round. So don't hold back, do as many as you can. And then when you hit that failing point or close to failure, then you can pause, take a couple of deep breaths, let the burn off and then continue on. But the point is for it to burn. And once you're starting to feel that burning sensation, that's when you want to push further and really test your limits. A lot of people stop when it starts to burn and that is leaving a lot of gains on the table. So you want to make sure that that's your signal to keep going and really push yourself. All right, we're going to take about 90 seconds and then I'm going to do one more round. Next exercise, so exercises three and four are actually a super set. We're gonna be doing uh, a lying lateral raise. So I'm using cables. This is a dual cable system here. So if you don't have this at your gym, you could probably just do like a standing version or standing dumbbell lateral raises. But I really like this variation. Laying on my back really helps me to keep my traps out of it a little bit more. And I do have a tendency to kind of like shrug a little bit. So I have to really be mindful of that. Almost every workout, I don't know, maybe years of shrugging at my desk or something. What I'm gonna do here is crisscross them. And then I'm really trying to control it so much that these don't clink together. If you hear them clinking a lot while you're performing it, I would say that you're probably swinging too much or at least you're relaxing too much on the eccentric. So I try to keep a good amount of tension throughout and make it very consistent. Because it's a dual cable system, the weight selection is kind of tricky because it gets heavy really quickly. So I can do the first plate and I can't quite do the third plate. So something in between, which means I just try to increase my reps a little bit. So I'm gonna aim for about 15 to 20. And then I like to superset this with the upright row. So we're gonna also move over to do upright row. By that point, I'm gonna be a little bit burnt out, a little bit tired. So I'm gonna aim for about 10 to 12 reps on that one. Again, still really good form, getting really good eccentrics and really good contraction at the top. And if I can do more than 12, I'm definitely gonna do more than 12, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that I'll be pretty burnt out by after doing all these. Let's get into it. So right about here is where it's starting to burn. About 10 reps. I'm gonna really try to knock out, see if I can get another 
to maybe 17. All right, we're gonna go for 20. Oh man. <laughs> oh my God. Get into our upright rows. I like this bar. This is a little bit lighter than the other easy bar. So a little less to hold on to. Pump. Look at that. <laughs> no more space. You guys seen my workout with Milos? If you guys haven't seen them on the channel, I've got two. If you want some serious leg day inspiration, you guys should watch those videos. We are moving on to uh, the fourth and final exercise of the, the delt portion of this workout. It's supposed to be face pulls actually, but I forgot we just got this new machine. So um, this is essentially like a rear delt fly, but like in reverse. So I'm gonna adjust, this actually does a chest fly as well, but I'm gonna adjust this close together. I actually did this differently. I saw you got into it differently the other day. You were like here and then you were smart and you closed it. Being a crazy girl that I am, I was like, let me just slide in here. <laughs> okay, so with the uh, rear delt fly, good and basically get your arms through here and use the elbows like you're kind of elbowing someone, kind of creep up on you. This is a new machine that we have at the gym. It's an old machine. If you didn't have this machine at your local gym, which you probably don't, um, I would just do uh, a cable reverse fly or you could do um, the regular pec deck reverse fly. Either of those are suitable or even just stick with face pulls. Um, there's always a, a great exercise to include in your workouts. So we're gonna do uh, sets of 12 to 15 here. So what I love about this machine is that you can really leverage and, and push from your elbows to target the rear delts. Whereas with other machines, you know, you have to hold like the machine or cables, you have to hold it and you use a lot of your forearms just to hold the, the machine. And I find, especially as women, we tend to not have the strongest forearms and you start to fatigue in that area really quickly. So I love anything that you can do to sort of eliminate that factor, I think is fantastic. I wish they made more of these machines. Actually, I'm surprised they don't because um, it's so great. I also notice I have more control too. I'm not like shrugging as much. And I find that sometimes with some of these rear delt exercises, I can definitely shrug and start to feel it in my neck and my traps. So it's a good one. We're gonna do three sets here, 12 to 15 reps. I think this weight is actually gonna be good. I'm gonna probably fatigue as I go further along. And then we're gonna move on to my two back exercises for this workout. Okay, so my current training block, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, two upper body days and three lower body days. The upper body days are more biased towards delts because that's the area that I wanna work on and also fits the sort of aesthetic that I'm going for. I also have a lot of back development already, so I don't really need to do a ton of back work anymore. I did do that for many years. So if you're someone who needs to build your back more, then I would definitely have a dedicated full back workouts. But my two upper body days are basically four delt exercises and two back exercises. And I pretty much include a, a pull down variation and a rowing variation in, in each workouts. Now, again, this is specifically designed for my body and what I need to do, be doing for the look I'm trying to achieve. 
So what you wanna achieve might be different. I'm not doing heavy weight. I'm not doing a ton of volume. It's really just more of a touch up work to sort of keep the muscle maintenance, so to speak. I'm not necessarily trying to build a ton of size or anything like that. So my pull down variation is a close grip. I'm using the V attachments. I put this box up here so that I can get a slightly different angle. Basically, if I was sitting directly underneath it, it doesn't quite get the angle that I wanna to get to target my lower lats. So I'm sitting back away from the machine a little bit so I can bring the cable straight down. And you'll notice my arms sort of stay in like this sort of a 90 degree angle when I'm pulling down versus being like this when I'm down. So I'm gonna do sets of 12 here and then I'll move on to my rowing exercise, which I'll show you guys. But again, I'm really just focusing on range of motion, getting as much length as possible. You do record your, your lifts, you know, just to see how you perform it. Look at your range of motion. And by that, I mean, are you stretching as far up as you possibly can and contracting down as you should feel like a pinch down here in your lats. I see a lot of people stack the weight up really, really heavy and their range of motion is like right here versus stretching all the way up and coming all the way down. So take a look at that for yourself. You're leaving a lot of gains on the table if, if you don't do that. And uh, you don't really need to be going super heavy if you're actually getting full range of motion. You'd be surprised at how much more difficult it is. All right, so second back exercise for this workout is gonna be a seated cable row. With this one, I really try to get, again, as much range of motion as possible. So you'll notice I really stretch forward, letting sort of the shoulders come out of the socket, getting a little bit of roundness to the upper back slowly, and then pulling everything back, contracting and driving my elbows backwards. And I do feel a lot of mid back with this one, lower, lower traps, which is great. I like to build a little bit more in that area. Um, we're gonna aim for about 12 reps here as well, not really taking it to failure. I do not have my wrist straps today, which I usually, you guys have seen me, I usually wear my Versa grips. I don't have that. So a limiting factor with a lot of my back workouts is that my grip fails first. So um, I'm really just gonna rely on tempo and maybe adding a couple of reps if I need to, to get to that near failure, but not quite to failure. All right, you guys, so that concludes the uh, upper body portion of the workout. I'm gonna move on to do a little bit of abs. I'm doing a weighted crunch and I'm also doing a decline bent reverse crunch. One of my favorite exercises. After I finish this, I'm gonna head home real quick and eat because I am starving. We recently cut back my food just a little bit. Like I said before, I'm transitioning into kind of a maintenance phase prior to uh, cutting. And I think it's a really important piece that people miss when they are wanting to lose body fat. They go from um, a surplus calories right down to rock bottom where they're gonna lose weight initially because it's such a huge contrast, but they're leaving a lot of progress on the table by dropping down so quickly. So your dieting approach makes a really, really big difference in your success rate when it comes to the long-term muscle gaining potential and fat loss potential. And I particularly see this in women who are midlife, 40s and 50s. The tendency is to go to these 800, 1200 calorie diet and lots of cardio and they really miss out on a lot of gains that they could be having if they take a, a more strategic protocol with their dieting approach and then pairing that with a sustainable weight training routine. So really, really critical things. Everything that I do that you guys see on this channel here is very intentional, whether it is the training split or uh, this exercise selection. And then again, pairing that with the right nutrition approach, depending on your history, your dieting history, what your goals are, what your body looks like right now, your body fat percentage, muscle mass, all of that goes into play. 
So very, very um, nuanced from individual to individual. And it's something that I think is, is really, really underappreciated, especially for women in this age category. So if you're a woman in midlife who is looking for more specificity to your program and help with your nutrition to reach your fitness goals, whether it's fat loss, building, or learning just a maintenance, sustainable lifestyle for healthy aging, I'd love to speak with you more. I have uh, links in my bio where you can read more about my coaching services and what my team provides. We work with women all over the world to help them achieve a next level of fitness that they've yet to achieve. And we'd love to work with you. So go ahead and check out the links below. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this, you wanna see more of my training, more about dieting, if you have any questions on fitness, fat loss, and muscle building for women, go ahead and put them in the comments below. And we will look forward to making more videos for you guys in the future.